CBC Classic. And, and that tournament was truly the biggest tournament of the year because it was televised, uh, shown on ESPN. So that event was the most viewed event, and Hogan had to win that event. So now I'm playing Hogan, and when you talk about colliding of energy, him having to win the tournament, Dan Bertolucci refereeing the match, it was, and I'll say this, uh, the, the greatest match of all time. Players compete for $15,000 and the Catalina World Cup. Colton of St. Louis, 15-11 and 15-8. And in the match of two veteran American professionals, Jerry Halisher played superbly in defeating Davey Bledsoe, 15-7 and 15-6. Hi everybody, this is Scott Oak and welcome back to Winnipeg's Court Sports Club for the CBC International Racquetball Classic. Well, we expect an excellent semifinal today. Marty Hogan has been seated first in every tournament he has entered since 1976, and playing in this tournament, Jerry Halisher just might be at the top of his game. And Jerry, you pretty well have to be at the top of your game when you're playing Marty Hogan, don't you? Well, Marty's been number one over the years. He's, he has an excellent game forehand and backhand. I'm going to have to play tough. Uh, one thing Marty does is keep the pace very quick, and I have the ability to slow down the pace by hitting off-speed shots and misdirection shots, and hopefully that'll take away some of his edge. All right, uh, Marty, since Jerry has been playing so well of late, I would say this one has the potential to be your toughest semifinal in the CBC Classic. There's no doubt. Uh, Jerry's a very tough pressure player, but I think his game has uh, many flaws in it, one being that his backhand is considerably weaker than his forehand. But Jerry does have one of the toughest forehands in the game, and my game plan is simply to keep the ball to the left and enforce those errors. All right, and I'm sure you'll be wanting to show Marty those many flaws in the court, right, Jerry? <laughs> I'll show each one. Okay. We'll see what happens on the court as we join Charlie Brumfield and Don Whitman. Thank you, Scott. Charlie, do you agree with Marty that Halesher's backhand is weaker than his forehand? Well, to call Halesher's backhand pathetic is a euphemism. It's one of the worst <laughs> swings I've ever seen. But seriously, G what Jerry does do well is slow the game down. I saw a match once that a sportscaster described as one long timeout. He slows the pace down and waits for his shot. And he's a great junk player. It should be a great contrast in styles. Glacier and Hogan in this semifinal match. Leach's professional player, Marty Hogan, with the tip, and now on the court. Game action, game one, the score tied at 14. Marty Hogan, Jerry Halesher, Hogan the defending champion. Hogan's got the forehand. Notice how he rushed it, tried to intercept the ball as quickly as possible, slid the ball down the right wall. Halesher makes the big move to get the ball, but it's gone bye-bye. And a 15-14 first game victory for Marty Hogan. And he is delighted with that performance. But in game two, the situation reversed. Hogan had difficulties, and now it's Halesher serving game point. Well, Jerry completely reversed the timing on his plays and got Marty guessing and moving incorrectly, moving into the ball. He started overhitting the ball, and Halesher was able to recover, pop the ball up to the ceiling here waiting for a better opportunity. Hogan sets up on his normally awesome. He backs around his backhand. Now, he doesn't usually do that. Drove the ball into the ground for the miscue in the game. So we are going to a tiebreaker. Halesher and Hogan. Jerry Halesher coming back in game two for a 15-7 victory after losing the first game by a score of 15-14. The tiebreaker right after the tiebreaker. Jerry Halesher coming back to win game two after losing the first, 15-14. Point. Quickly, he gets a point in the tiebreaker. This is a very, very important game for Marty's career. Uh, of course, Jerry won the first professional One, tournament of the season, zero. beating Hogan in that event. If he wins Short, this tournament, beats serve. Hogan here and goes on to win in the finals, he would take temporary possession of Marty's throne. And, you know, Marty's got the seat all warmed up. He doesn't want to leave it. Well, there's no doubt that Marty Hogan has revolutionized the sport of racquetball. Well, if you look at all the different sports, so when Bill Russell came into basketball or a Jack Nicklaus so comes into golf, each of them has a particular Third dominating element in their personality Zero. and their game style Zero that completely one. revolutionizes the way the game is. Shorts. With Russell, it was, of course, defense. With Jack Nicklaus, it was concentration and the ability to combine brute force with tremendous Second finesse. Uh, with Hogan, Hogan came into a game that was dominated by control, uh, shot selection. Point court gentlemanship 
and completely transformed it into a game of power. In the later stages of his career, as now he's won four world titles consecutively, he's added touch, finesse, one, and he's a complete all-around player and a true champion. Short. But can he beat Halisha in the tiebreaker? <laughs> well, he's going to give it his best shot. Sensor. You can rest assured of that. However, he had problems in game two. It almost seemed in game two, in which he lost 15-7, there were times in the match where he lost his con concentration. Point. An early lead in a tiebreaker is a must for Hogan right now breaker. because Halacher, in my mind, is the toughest player in the country to 11 points. He slows it Two, down, he junks you. He reminds me of a guy playing the shell game. You never know under which shell the P is. You'd swear Halacher was going to hit to the right and he goes to the left. And he covers like he was auditioning for a job as a circus clown. He's diving on the ground, rolling. Points. Couldn't stop that play as Marty drove the ball from very, very close to the front wall down the right side. And Jerry had to wave at it helplessly. Three, serving one. Hogan's noted for his power serve. He's been clocking the radar gun at 142 miles an hour, and that one was just too quick for Halacia to get over. Although Jerry is probably has one of the best lateral moves. He's a lanky man. He steps over with a 6-1 frame and can return almost any serve. But what about that weak backhand that Hogan alluded to at the start? Well, we used to call it the land of no return. Halacia's improved it considerably, though. Give him his due. You don't win a professional tournament without being equally the strong. There's a disputed wow. shot. Jerry's not happy about Alicia it. Marty got down very low on that forehand. Let's take a look at it. Alicia dropping the head of his racket with his weird swing. Marty getting down with that tremendous athletic ability trying to drive the ball in. It was a close call. Marty, this is reminiscent of game two when you held a substantial lead. Uh, is there any possibility of the same lapse in concentration? Well, I sure hope not. That, uh, that second game really slipped away from me. I had a 6-0 lead, but he served near perfect. He really kept me off balance. And well, he served about eight aces, so I was clean out of the, uh, I didn't even have a chance to rally. If I can get the ball in the rally, I have an 80% chance of winning the rally. Five, serving one. The confident Marty Hogan leading 5-1 in this 11-point tiebreaker. But as Marty referred to game two, he led 6-0 in that one and wound up losing for 15-7. Uh, Glacier serving. One thing about Jerry, normally he'll play defense on his backhand side, One, treating seven, it as a five. shield and with his forehand as a sword. However, Short. in recent Second tournaments, serve. his whole game has transferred to more of an offensive style of his backhand, and he puts the ball away once he forces the player off balance with his forehand push, like he Points. did there. Beautiful shot. He leaned to the right, poked the ball into the right corner. Nothing really powerful, just where's the P, Marty? Where's the P? <laughs> Unless you're serving 11-point tiebreaker. Two, serving five. Notice how low he gets on the ball. He steps into Short. it and generates tremendous power by driving his upper body toward the target zone in the front wall. Looking for some of those aces that he hit so successfully in game two. Oh, out. Tough shot. What he tried to do is what you should try to do anytime you're jammed by the ball. Bounce away from it and put the ball in the direction where it's meant to be hit. If it's interior to your body, go into the left corner with your forehand, which Jerry tried to do there and miss it by five, the smallest of two. measurements. Hogan's not getting down as well in his serve as he normally Alicia does. Peels, so the consequently, the ball, the ball is hitting a little bit short ball. of that back service Second line. It serve. has to clear to constitute a legal serve. There are no appeals in the serve. What was appealed there was, a sh was whether the serve had hit the floor first. Point. Well, you don't really want to give Hogan that one. You don't pull on Superman's cape. You don't give Hogan the forehand from five feet in the front court. Jerry knows that. He's talking to himself. There's the defensive ceiling ball trying to get Hogan out of center court position. Marty drives it and Jerry Points. wasn't able to recover that time. That was a relatively easy coverage position for Jerry to get the ball back, although it would have been a weak return. He seemed to be a little bit surprised that Hogan went down the left wall, possibly Seven, anticipating three, a reverse two. pinch into the left corner. Hogan requiring just four more points to win this semifinal tiebreaker against Jerry Halesher and move on to the final. Hogan serving 11 point tiebreaker. Jerry exhorting himself on. Sometimes Eight, he reminds me of two. Linda Blair in The Exorcist right before she barfed the avocado. Oh, Hogan missed from the front court. Now, Marty's using a different racket this tournament than he normally does. It only Alicia weighs 240 serving. grams. And on occasion, on these tough, quick rallies in the front court, he's overreacted on the two ball. serving eight. That wasn't a case of him being late. He overhit the ball Short. and came over it with a forearm pronation that gives him the power, but it directed Second the serve. ball into the floor. Medium 
Steve Z serve. Going down the line to Halacious back in. Notice how Hogan cut it off. Great get by the circus clown. He's still in there. Oh, beautiful. Dropped the head of the racket, scooped it in on the push shot. San Francisco would be proud of that pace. Hogan's not happy with it. Watch Halacious get down this serve. He's going to try to fake left. Look right. Made him pop the ball up. He's got the shot. Went down the lane with it. Hogan's forced to go defense. Uh oh Is there another button on that shirt, Hogan? He can't believe it. He had the ball he wants. His backhand, I think, everyone talks about the, the Hogan power, the Hogan this, the Hogan that on his forehand side. Marty's most beautiful, rhythmical, poetic shot almost is his backhand. There you saw an example of a beautiful Point. pulling backhand. Jerry anticipating cross court where 75% of all balls go and poked it in. A leisure staging a late rally in this tiebreaker. Five, he trailed at one eight. point, eight two. Short. Jerry's trying to beat Marty Seven at his serve. strength on serve return on the ball that's short. Hogan returns better with his forehand on the front court ball. On the deep court ball, his backhand's much more consistent. There's a shot at the back wall. Beautiful shot. That was wallpaper. Halacia bounce. That's a good tip for the amateur. Bounce if the ball's tough to get your feet in a position. Game, Do not try to reach for the ball where you're forced to aim harmlessly Six, wave at it. Eight. Bounce and get your power center near the ball and swing at it. Hold it. Hold it. Short serve. The call Short by serve. our referee, Dan Bertolucci. And, of course, there is no appeal Second on serve. the serve. Well, this is the most important title other than the Nationals that is played in North America during the course of the year, and, and Hogan needs this. His reputation demands it. When you're on a pinnacle, you're expected Hogan to win. Serving. You're talking about the best athlete in the game, third in the world superstars. Nice. He doesn't want to go six. down here on national television. Short. Well, Hogan very definitely in Second control seven. in this tiebreaker. Well, I don't agree. I don't think his momentum is there right now. He looks a little bit shaky. He hasn't put some balls away from front court, which he normally does over and over again. He's leaving the ball up like there. A little bit late getting over, and Halacia's got the setup. Sets up on his forehand. Half speed. Great get by Hogan. Halacia cuts it off. Oh, top spin. Flat roll out. Watch the slow Hogan motion. Hogan the last shot. I call the shot good. Great get by Hogan. Halacia's going to try to drive the ball. Rips it into the right corner. Hogan steps forward, cuts the ball off. Halacia charges the ball while he's got Hogan on the ground. Top spin, over spin, flat roll out. Okay, well, he's two points away from the victory, so it would seem more important for you, though, to add some points here. Well, i got to serve a little better. We're, we're both having opportunities, and it's getting to a tight point in the match. We're both missing a couple, but still, we're not afraid to take the shot. Marty and I are both going for winners every shot. Just like it's 0-0, zero, zero. so... Uh, now, there have been no rallies at all in this tiebreaker. Well, we're going for the quick shots. Uh, we're both in great shape. I'm not even sweating. I guess it's the, the dryness up here, but uh, I can't take more time out when I dive to wipe up the floor, so I guess I'm going to have to get it out. Okay. Good luck in the rest of the tiebreaker. We have the conclusion of the tiebreaker in the semifinal after this commercial break. Some of the frustration of not being able to put this one away, very evident with Marty Hogan. Jerry's taking his time, letting Marty think about it. Glacier serving. He wants that number one position more than anything Eight else. He can ten. taste it. He needs three good serves. Force Hogan up. Jerry taking the ball at the back wall. Not too good. He's got his forehand, though. Hogan, great get. Tries to slide the ball down the left wall. Beautiful three-pronged plop shot. Hogan kicks it in. He should have kicked it in the first time. He's got the forehand over there. A little bit of interference. Not called. Marty goes down, Jerry steps forward, drops the head of the racket, and slices it into the corner. Point. Mr. Halacia serving. Third game. 11 point tiebreaker, 9, serving 10. Tension mounting here at the Court Sports Club. Marty Hogan, the defending champion, one point away from. The oh, points. beautiful. Well, here it is. Watch this in slow motion. Good get by Marty, pop into the ceiling, but it comes down a little bit short. Jerry sets up on his potent forehand, drives it into the corner. Marty has no chance as the ball bounces twice. He's Third fired game. up now. This is it. Ten game this and is match it. points. What's he gonna do with ten. the serve? He's got the best in the game. Let's see what he does with it. Drive down the left wall. 
Hogan down the left wall. Beautiful lane shot. Halacia flips it up. Marty's got his forehand. Forced to go defensive, which is unusual. They're both waiting for that opportunity to attack. Solid oh, ball off the side wall. Jerry sits up on his forehand. Goes down the left lane. Could have been interference. We're calling a hinder. I thought it was a good call. Let's watch the replay. There's the drive as Halacia barely gets out of the way. We saw in a previous telecast that that can constitute a visual hinder. 10, game and match point, serving okay, 10. Okay, here it is. Game and match point. Drive down the right, good drive. Wide angle pass by Hogan. The circus clown gets it back. Hogan's got the backhand. The wide angle cross court diving get. Marty goes to the back while he's back. Oh, it's skipped in! It's skipped in, that's the match! There Side out. Oh! Take away his white cane! Take away his white cane! It's play, gentlemen. Let's watch the replay. Jerry snapping the ball back. Marty setting up off the back wall with his backhand. Jerry, do you driving want to it Let's play. up. An obvious Alicia skip shot right up in the front court. Good. But they both did the race to the wall. The linesman split on the call. We replay. Halacia still serving game 10 apiece. Serving 10. Good serve. Hogan all a little bit weak on that one, too. Jerry up to the ceiling. Marty's got his big forehand to hit, driving by Halacia. Yeah! Hold it up. Side out. Oh! <laughs> Halacia appeals a shot. I call it good. This one was a tough one to see. Hogan hit it so hard. He steps in. The big driving shot. We couldn't tell from this angle, but that Fisher was very, very close. I line was good, 10. no question. The linesman split again. Here comes Alasia for his third chance. It could be the charm. Diving get, cannot get the ball back. Took the shot. Side out. This is a real Ivy oh, League wow. sport, isn't it, Don? <laughs> <laughs> Diving get attempted at the Hogan back wall serving. by Alicia, and it came up short. Hogan wants it now. It's 10 up. Game and match point. He got a break earlier. He skipped one in. Well, they're both on the famous Third race game. to the service line. Whoever Ten. gets there game first, Bertolucci calls it in their favor. Ten. He's thinking about it. Well, he'll probably go with his power drive to the left. There's the ceiling ball. Marty setting up, a little bit short. Jerry drives it down for a winner. Put the nail in the coffin. And he points to each of the linesmen going, see how they run. Jerry wants it. Wants it very, very badly. He needs a crack. He needs a break. He needs a fluke. Hogan never gives you anything at 10 up. On the left, short ball. Well, this is about the only thing they are not allowed to appeal. The short serve. Second serve. But they can complain about it, though, Doug. <laughs> this has been a dandy. The tie break. Tied at 10. Good. Beautiful shot. Facing elimination. He goes, that's when it's tough. Facing elimination. Backhand down to that left corner. Mr. Hogan serving. I can't Final believe game. he took that shot for game point. point. Shoulder high record. backhand. That shot was unknown ten to it 10 years point, ago. Serving 10. He Second cranked serve. it up 140 miles an hour. A little bit short of that back service line. Now let's see how aggressive he gets in his serve and particularly how much guts Halacia has on the return. I love. Short hop, set up, Hogan drives it, Halacia snaps it back by him, diving get. Here's the setup on the Halacia backhand, driving it cross court again. Now he's got the plob, oh, flattens it out, flattened it out. Good crowd at the Court Sports Club, and I don't think there's any doubt they're pulling for the underdog, Jerry Halacia. Hogan can't believe it. He had an opportunity there, not Stralacia a real good serving, setup, but one game. which you'd expect a four-time world champion to convert. Ten. Game and Jerry and made a very, points, very difficult shot ten. to win that point. Is this the uh, fifth time that Halacia has served match point? Went down the right side, caught the crack. 
short. Cut the crack. Oh, the call short. On the line. Let's play it over. Second serve. Of course, he can't appeal to serve. Well, in all fairness to Bertolucci, this is the most difficult of all racket sports to referee. It's very, very tough at the serve moving that fast, but that ball was very close to being over. Beautiful drive, great diving get by Alicia. Hogan sets up for the big forehand, goes down the right wall. Alicia cuts it off. And it is over! Jerry Halacia with an upset, Space knocking Space. off defending champion Marty Hogan in a tiebreaker, and what a tiebreaker it was. Alasia, the winner, 11-10 in this tiebreaker. There's the power drive down the left side. Jerry leaving his feet, flipping it up, making the roll. Marty backing up to crank up in that big forehand shot. Steps into the ball, rips it down the line. Jerry off balance, tweak, it goes in for a winner. Jerry Halesher, the winner of our semifinal, beating defending champion Marty Hogan. And uh, all the calls aside, that may have been one of the greatest tiebreakers we've ever seen. That definitely was an exciting tiebreaker. Uh, it was a well-played match, and it was a, simply a case of me having the match won and me waiting until I lost. I stayed out there until I lost, and, and I succeeded. You didn't appear to be killing the ball until you absolutely had to. For example, you didn't start really killing it until late in the tiebreaker, which, as you say, may have been too late. That was just, that's just 100% concentration. That has nothing to do with my skills or anything. Just that my concentration is just so bad, it's the worst I've ever seen in any athlete anywhere in any sport. All right, Jerry, comment on the end of the match, if you would. Well, I didn't give up. He, uh, Marty was up. I kept coming back. I wasn't afraid to shoot. We had a lull period about halfway through the, the tiebreaker, which nobody was able to really get anything amounted. I was able to sneak back at that time. I was up 10-9, 10-10, something like that, and we had some great volleys. I thought I won the match twice. It was overturned. Uh, I had a second chance, third chance, fourth chance, and uh, finally put it away. All right, you played very well throughout this CBC Classic, but for a while today, it appeared as though the rhythm of your game was off somewhat from what it had been earlier. Marty makes that happen. Marty is a great player. You have to be playing great. You can't play your game against Marty. You have to try to play as close to your game as possible. Luckily, I came out on top today. And literally the same shot comes up back wall back can left wall skip front wall <laughs> and again raise my arms up and berlucci after a pause side out shot winner and it's like you've got to be kidding me and i hear brumfield who is probably the greatest announcer of all time i mean if, if anyone Hopefully someone could find this match because it is a spectacle just listening to the commentating. He is the greatest and yelling and screaming to the ref, take away his white cane, take away his white cane.